Hello everybody, this is Captain Dennis with Squalus Marine Divers, and uh, this is a new video, uh, it's kind of different, there may be some misdirection in this video. Um, this is a wreck called the Red Herring Wreck, it's a wreck that we worked on for uh, most of 2018, uh, we did a bunch of dives on it, and uh, here we are in the secret, top secret, undisclosed location, and uh, you can see we got a buoy on the wreck, so we're going to get in the water and... Uh, get down to the bottom and see what we can see on this very interesting wreck. So as we get down, we can see the visibility is not the best, uh, but we're going to go way down, way down to the bottom of the anchor line, and we're going to start our dive at the bottom. Not a lot of uh, floating pretty out here. So as we get down to the bottom, somewhat of a compacted uh, substrate, which is uh, pretty good around a wreck. It's pretty normal. You get a lot of stuff breaks off and it kind of makes the ground a little tougher. So we're just gonna double check, make sure the anchor's in there nicely nice and get to exploring. So that looks good enough for me, and let's get to it. So here we are, we see our first visitor, it's a welcoming committee, it's a oyster toadfish, and this guy's just kind of hanging out. Let me try something, Dracaris. Nope, not a dragon, just a little oyster toadfish hanging out. So here we are on the gunnel, and we're going to start following the gunnel. And we'll see where it takes us. We're already finding treasure. So we're on the port side of the ship heading aft. And some lines here. And at Squall Spring, we always follow the rope, follow the rope. And it's just going to get tied to something. And it's tied to something, all right. more gunnel but it's actually running in through the gunnel but we're going to follow the gunnel because we know that's actually ship okay a clue this is the rudder post and you can see it comes to the very end of the stern Comes up pretty high. Just a couple of entanglements on it. Nothing super crazy. I'd rather have big lines than little lines. Kind of harder to get hemmed up in. And you got a big old Navy anchor kind of caught up in here. Right there. And if you look to the right, you'll see that little line. That's the top of the rudder. We'll come back to that. And there's the big fancy transom and over here you can see see that line right in the center of your screen with the fish looking that's the top of the rudder so if you want to get crazy you can go get the rudder but we're not we're not messing with that and here we have a resident under the stern big old fat black fish spend a little bit more time looking around the stern got a lobster trap wedged in there so now we're working forward over on the port side another sea bass made the ship its home and at some point it, I think it was painted green or blue it could be blue I think that's blue And moving forward. 
Oh, look at that. Got a brick. And this is a fire brick, folks. It says Brooklyn Fire Brick Works number one. We found the first fire brick they ever made. I don't know. I just think it's a type of brick. But these bricks were used to be put around uh, the boiler in the uh, engine to disperse heat so it didn't ignite the ship. So, you see something over there on the right? See that? Oh, what's this? Looks like junk, but it's not. It's actually Fresnel lens, which is spelled Fresnel lens, which is from Paris, I think. It was a pair of French guy came up with it, and uh, it helps to uh, disperse light, so that probably would have been used on a nav light. Here we are, uh, another piece, which uh, upon further inspection, it's a manual bilge pump. That's all brass. And now we are on the starboard side, moving forward. Not a very big beam on this uh, ship, maybe 20, 25 feet. And a beam for all you non-boat folks, that's how wide the boat is. So still plugging away going forward some interesting features now we're starting to get into the meat here here we are there's one of the sides of the boilers lots of piping got a pretty bright day today but I still prefer the lights on. See a little bit more with the lights, to be honest. It's on the port side of the boilers and the engine. Moving forward. Lots of old technology down here, folks. Now we're going to take a left, go into the midship area. This is the side of the, I believe, the boiler. There's a lot of tubes there. And we're coming around the front. So I'm guessing this is pretty much midship of the of the vessel. Here you can see the top of the boiler. You can see some of those bricks in there. Take a peek inside, see if we could see anything inside. And uh, coming up and to the right or the port side. So we another one of those bricks as we get a little closer. You can see lots of debris here. back up at the boiler. We're going to see if we can look inside again. Arm's not long enough. It just keeps going. And there's the top from the inside and more of those bricks. And you can see here how the bricks kind of lined the boiler to deal with the heat. Now we're on the starboard side and I see something strange. See that over there? And we'll come back to that. But first, what we're going to do is go up and over. This is the side of the boiler. Lots of piping going up to the top. Looks like most of this would have been covered by like a protective sheathing, but that's all long gone. And 
There's those bricks again. It's from a different angle. And actually, it looks like there may be two boilers. If you look over here on the right. Seems to be we're between both of them. You can see there's a big opening there. And there's a very similar looking structure on the right. This is between the both of them. And you got your pipes and valves and all kinds of good stuff. This is way up on top towards the aft part of the boiler slash engine. We're back on the gunnel again, and we're on the uh, starboard side. Actually, no, this is the port side. And lots and lots of debris. Nope, we are on the starboard side. So this is the starboard side, and you see what that thing is? Not the fish. That is a oldie time copper fire extinguisher. It's not going anywhere. A little bit of silt. I give it time, it goes away. That's why we like to dive with current. So we've got this uh, conduit, and it got us back in the stern a little bit right now, and it came across this giant white thing. Most people find plates in China. We find whole sinks. So this is a whole fully intact porcelain sink. It's upside down. Clean it off a little bit, see if it's got any writing on it. But it's stuck in the suction, so that's not really going anywhere. It's pretty impressive that it hasn't been broken over all these years. And it's in the back. So here we find something else, which is very interesting. Which, as my... Friend Emilio used to say, I think we found the cuarto de baño, the bathroom or the head. So we clean off the toilet, and it says Mohawk on the front of the toilet, which is cool. And then in the back, it says A.B. Sands and Sons, who made a lot of marine heads. And it's still got the flushy thing on the side or the pump, whatever you want to call it. So there's that. And if you go look that up, go look up A.B. and Sands Sons Mohawk toilet and go see what that cost back in the early 19-somethings. So we're heading off to the gunnel again, and you can see here, if you look real quick, there's actually a brass gate. I'm going to fan that sand a little bit. You can see it's, it's probably a drain of some sort. And if we go over here, we can see this. We got, a, got an engine room light. Still got the glass intact. a little dirty and I can't find the light switch which would actually help me on a dive like this but it is unfortunately no longer working but the glass is in there from a different point of view you can see here it's a little clearer on this you got over here you got the uh, little round thing in the back which caught my attention so I decided to rub that off a little bit and that's glass too 
They're just kind of twisting and turning. Cleaning it off a little bit. And she gives up. And there's a pressure gauge of some sort kind of below. So now we're up in the uh, bow area heading forward on the port side, I'm pretty sure this time. Yep, port side. Because look at this. A whole wall of those fire bricks fell off away from the boiler. And they're kind of laid out like a patio. You can see how they kind of place them together to disperse the heat. But they're supposed to be up against it. So I think the uh, outside steel kind of rotted away and this whole thing gave way. That's my guess. And they've all got embossing on them. But we'll just leave them the way they are. So now we're on the port side, moving forward, or yeah, forward. And we've seen this before. And look at that, see that? See the green thing? It's another conduit of some sort, electrical conduit. You can see all the wires. And it's got some writing on it. Try and clean that off a little bit more. I could read New York and something or other company. But if you pause it, you can probably figure it out. Still moving forward. And on the port side, a little bit of entanglement here, but nothing to be crazy about. Current's moving a little quick today, but that's pretty much a good thing as far as I'm concerned. So now moving along the gunnel. like to look underneath here because sometimes things get wedged underneath. Do you see that? Can you make that out? See those little straight lines? Well, what do we got here? Some more Fresnel lens. Actually, it's a whole side. So this is probably from one of the nav lights. And then you get a little crab causing trouble in this thing. I'm not sure if this is the funnel. Or something like that, but it looks like a big piece of potentially, well, with steel, it would be orange and it would be falling apart. So I don't know what this is, but it's still pretty, uh, pretty intact. And then there's one of those things. I don't know what those are called. And we found it. Ooh, the Germans have been here. Weissbier. So it could be a German boat now. It's probably just somebody drinking. So here we are up in the forward part of the ship. And this thing caught my eye. I don't know. This could be a mast of some sort. But as we keep coming, look at this. Now, when I first saw this, I thought it was the helm. And after arguing with a few other divers, they're like, no, no, no. It's too small to be the helm. And what we think it is, is we think it's the manual brake for the winch, which it looks like there's a capstan on the other side of this thing. So that's... Probably more of what it is. But she's big and she's all in one piece and I don't know, a couple hundred pounds all day long. But it's cool to look at. So a little lobster over here. It's that mast again. And then we saw this thing, which looks like the, the little intake. It's very, very thin. I think that's copper. It's very thin, fragile. And it's buried. So this could have been where the ship took in clean air or something like that. There's a name for this thing, but I don't know. 
So uh, we've pretty much reached the end of our dive. We hope you enjoyed this rather long and misdirected um, video on the red herring wreck. Um, see a little fluke over here. I'm going to see him. And then uh, we hope you enjoyed this video. We hope uh, you got a chance to see what it's like to be on a real dive and see all kinds of different things. It's a little longer, but hey, we're glad you were able to join us. So check us out at squallsmarine.com for other wreck videos and reefs and all kinds of stuff. And uh, we look forward to dive with you in 2019. And until then, I'm Captain Dennis.